Jewish Channel's Week in Review. Why will Orthodox people want to sleep here? Taking a high-end approach to Hanukkah cuisine, a former chief rabbi of Israel raising money for West Bank settlements, and more of the Jewish news that's changing your world right now in this episode of the Week in Review. Hello, and welcome to the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. It's Hanukkah this week, and we've got some special items to share with you for the holiday, including a recipe coming up later. The idea of lighting a menorah or Hanukkiah in your window on the holiday of Hanukkah comes from the idea of spreading the message of the holiday or Pirsume Neis. In a hilarious episode, it seems a Jewish message has been placed rather prominently in the heart of Iran for decades, and it has Iranian officials furious. Thanks to the satellite imaging program Google Earth, this image of a major airport in Iran reveals a massive Star of David on top. Iranian officials are calling for its immediate removal. Iranian media claims the way the Star of David got there was thanks to Israeli engineers who built the airport prior to 1979's revolution. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that Iranians have gotten outraged over the six-pointed star in a prominent place. A few months ago, a monument in Tehran's Revolution Square was identified by a hardline website as having hidden Star of David patterns throughout. Whatever comes of both of these sites, we'll probably know soon afterward, thanks to more satellite images. Well, if one group is all about hating on the Zionist mission, another group made a surprising journey to share the love with Israel. The Amish generally avoid motorized travel, but a recent exception was made for representatives of the Amish communities from the United States and Switzerland to visit Israel. They were carrying a message of contrition, asking for forgiveness for their silence during the Holocaust, and to declare their support for Israel. It's a very unusual and bold move by a group so committed to religious isolation, and all the more surprising because the Amish aren't really considered culpable for anything at all during the Holocaust. In another story of tourism by the devoutly religious, a new hotel is catering to an Orthodox clientele, and Christian Neiden has the story. New York City is home to some of the most famous hotels in the world, but how many of them cater to an Orthodox Jewish clientele? Well, the newly opened Condor Hotel in Williamsburg, Brooklyn is serving that market, and Condor owner Zalman Glauber told TJC about the local need he's filling. It's large families, and um, people come for guests, people come for Shabbos, people come for Simcha, and they don't have a way to stay. So it's a good, very good option. Uh, until now, they would be looking for basements and stuff like that. The Orthodox traveler demographic is one that Glauber sees as needing the services he can provide. People coming to, for instance, to, for the city, I mean, for business, for shows and stuff like that. And they were, lo I mean, people were looking for a, a, a nice place to stay. And since it's a hop over from the Windsor Bridge, you know, hop over from the city, um, it was a good, it's a good option. It's a good option for business people. I mean, business from around here who are bringing in, bringing in people and um, Jews from all over the world. To hear what else the Condor Hotel has to offer, please tune in to the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Christian. Of course, an Orthodox hotel would be the perfect place for a former chief rabbi of Israel to stay. And Rebecca Honig Friedman has a report on just one such individual visiting the Lower East Side to raise money for a West Bank settlement. Jewish residents of Manhattan's Lower East Side buzzed with excitement last week over a special visitor in their midst. The former chief rabbi of Israel and current chief rabbi of Tel Aviv, Rabbi Yisrael Meir Lau. He's an incredible speaker. He speaks throughout the world. And in our, you may call our isolated community here on the Lower East Side, to have him come down and be here in person, as you see over there, it's just an incredible feeling. And you see the great crowd that's already gathered. The occasion for Rabbi Lau's auspicious visit was a fundraiser for Netzer Ariel, a West Bank settlement community. The Netzer Ariel community had previously been in Gaza and was removed by the Israeli government as part of the disengagement from Gaza in August of 2005. The community resettled in the West Bank settlement of Ariel. But more than the cause of this West Bank settlement, Lau's presence was the big draw of the evening. At a small reception before the program, Lau was welcomed by rabbis of the synagogues on the Lower East Side, a Jewish community which skews heavily Orthodox and has historically maintained an identity apart from the rest of New York's Jewish community. Speaker of the New York State Assembly and longtime Lower East Side resident Sheldon Silver was also on hand to welcome Rabbi Lau and presented him with an official proclamation from the New York State Assembly in his honor. Obviously, he's a very important to our community that someone of his uh, background and his distinction comes here to address the community. While most Jewish communities would consider a visit from a world-renowned figure like Lau an honor, it was seen as a particular boon to the Lower East Side. Once home to more than half a million Jews, 
Changing demographics here have left some worried about the future of its once booming Jewish community. We're not the old Jewish community that we were. We're, we're a changed Jewish community, but tonight show that there is still the unity of the various synagogues and the various individuals of the community. Longtime resident and event co-organizer David Zitzer said he'd like to see more such events, but that community-wide fundraisers like this one could be difficult to organize. Because obviously different people want to fundraise for different concepts or ideas, and here we were able to get everybody together for, uh, for one idea. Interestingly, the one idea that brought Lower East Siders together a fundraiser for a settlement community in Israel, is one that's been controversial and divisive in much of the world. But it raised no controversy in this community that has only Orthodox synagogues and tends toward communal isolation. The event's explicit purpose was to raise money to build a Judaica library in Ariel, an example of the much contested settlement construction that's been the subject of so many arguments in recent efforts to relaunch peace talks between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. In his official remarks, Rabbi Lau referenced the week's Torah portion about Joseph and his brothers to stress the need for brotherhood among the Jewish people. He reminded the audience that the story takes place in Judea and Samaria, the controversial territories where the Netzer Ariel community has settled. A boy of 17, an orphan of his mother, from Kiryat Alba in the south of Judea, wrote to your brothers in Shechem, north of Somalia. You know the map of Israel today. Lau also offered what he called proof of the Jewish people's right to three particular areas at issue between Israelis and Palestinians. Abraham Avinu, Yaakov Avinu, David Amelech, bought these places. And the audience seemed receptive to his message in this fraught political climate. Especially now with what's going on, the different freezes that they're doing, one hopes that they will be able to let Israelis live like Israelis instead of like prisoners. The Nature Ariel representative, who brought Rabbi Lau over for the fundraiser, explained his position on the current American-Israeli relationship. I, I believe very much that the, the, the American government today is not a friendly, very friendly government to Israel. And therefore we have to take our own steps and we cannot live according to, to a, a, what, what a liberal a, a, a government in the United States is uh, dictating us. And he was dismissive of the very idea of a construction freeze. Okay, so when I say freeze means, I mean that even if they say you have to freeze, and even if they freeze, by the way, we build all over the place. I can say that the last year we haven't built so much ever as we did in the last freeze, freeze year. Okay, we don't build permanent, we build uh, uh, barracks and, and, and new uh, caravans and so on, but we bring in the same amount of families as always, maybe even more. And, our, and the fight is about how many families, how many Jews will live in Yudav Shomon. And if we grow with 6% every year, we are quite happy with that. To hear more about Rabbi Lau's visit to the Lower East Side, tune into the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Rebecca. Finally, in celebration of Hanukkah, the Jewish Channel is airing a special on high-end Hanukkah cuisine, as prepared by the Prime Grill restaurant's chef David Kalotkin. Here's one example of how Kalotkin is turning the traditional jelly donut, or sufganiyah, inside out. Truffle-topped latkes, a steak you wouldn't believe, and an innovative approach to the traditional jelly donuts of Hanukkah are all on the menu for our high-end Hanukkah cooking special. The Prime Grill restaurant is one of the premier kosher eateries, and it's for more than those who only eat kosher. We had Madonna here a couple weeks back for Sukkot, um, Vander Holyfield, we had Mike Tyson at Solo, our sister restaurant a couple weeks back too, but primarily uh, we're a high-end glad kosher steakhouse. So what special tricks does Chef David have in store for us for a Hanukkah dessert? Generally for Hanukkah we eat what we call uh, sufkan yot, which would be, let's say, jelly donuts. But we don't want to serve jelly donuts, you can go to anywhere else, to, to your quarter deli for that. So this is kind of like an inside out type donut where we're going to actually dip the uh, beignet into a nice apricot glaze and coat it with some sesame seeds. We're going to serve it in a nice little basket. Be great for the family, for friends, for company, or for dinner at the Prime Grill. To see how Chef David turns the jelly donut inside out, tune in to the full broadcast version of the Week in Review, and watch our Hanukkah food special only on the Jewish Channel. That's all for this week. We at the Jewish Channel wish you a very happy Hanukkah. Be well. The Jewish Channel is available on cable. I have Optimum Cable Channel 291, Time Warner Cable Channel 528, RCN Channel 268, Verizon Fios Channel 900, and Cox Cable Channel 1. 
For more information, visit TJCTV.com.